Former Toronto Police Chief Bill Blair, now MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice, is leading the federal government's efforts to legalize marijuana. He is in Durham today meeting with mayors, public health officials, fire and police, and he's taking the time out of his busy schedule to talk to Durham now. Blair joins us in the studio. Welcome. Thank you very much. And Jeff. thanks for, for spending the time. Now, as police chief, you spent three decades um, fighting crime, keeping kids safe, um, arresting people for um, having pot in their possession. Yes, now we're talking about legalizing it. Well, uh, Why is this a better well, way to go? And, and, and quite frankly, for some reason, everybody seems to only hear half of what the government proposes to do, and that's the uh, element of legal, uh, legalization. We're talking about replacing the current system of criminal prohibition to control this drug with a system of far more effective and comprehensive regulation, regulation that's going to control the production, distribution, and the consumption of this drug. Today, with the criminal prohibition system regimes that is currently in place, we have the highest rates of marijuana usage among our young people of any country in the world. And this is a drug that is dangerous for young people. And it, and it, it not only negatively affects their health, but a lot of outcomes for our kids. And so we need to do a better job protecting our kids. And the current system of control is failing those kids. We also know that that business overwhelmingly is controlled by organized crime who make billions of dollars for, in, in profits from that illegal s distribution and production of, of cannabis in our communities. And they're not in any way doing anything positive with that. They're responsible for much of the violence and victimization that takes place in our communities. And so our government's intent is to bring in a system of strict regulation for the, to control the production and the distribution of this drug. We can do a much better job of restricting the access that our kids have to this drug. And we can take those enormous profits away from organized crime and reinvest some of that revenue in public education, treatment, rehabilitation, and, and research that will enable us to do a better job protecting the health of our citizens. Now, uh, there, there has been some concern expressed. You know, the pot of the 1970s is nothing compared to the pot that's out there today as far as strength. So there's a lot of health concerns. What did you hear today from public, public health officials? Well, we heard how dangerous this drug can be for kids. And we've also heard from public health officials and from Ontario student drug use studies that almost 40% of our young people are using this drug and that's totally unacceptable it's dangerous for them it interferes with the adolescent brain development and it also interferes with a lot of positive outcomes for our kids and so we just need to do a better job of restricting their access i've also heard from from my colleagues right across the country that it's a lot easier for a kid to buy marijuana in canada than it is to even inquire a bottle of booze we strictly regulate alcohol and we have left it up to the criminal element to control the production and distribution of of, of cannabis that the, the drug that is being made available to our kids and in our communities is of, of much higher potency than was previously the case and is therefore of a greater risk to our kids. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's also often adulterated with other chemicals, with fertilizers that are not fit for human consumption, and sometimes even other drugs. And, and that's why it's so important. The current system of control is not doing the job we need it to do of protecting our kids and keeping our communities safe. And so we believe that a, a strict system of regulation and this is the part that I, I want the people of Durham to understand. The government's intent is to replace a failing system of control with an effective and comprehensive system of regulatory control. But there's also still always going to be the criminal element there. It is, you know, you regulate um, even DVDs and yes, there's always the criminal element there. How do you control that? And, and Deb, I have good news on that because while we, we are proposing to, to create a highly regulated system of production and distribution, anyone who operates outside of that system of regulation. So people who are growing cannabis outside of a strictly regulated, tested, accountable system will be committing a criminal offense and we'll still use the criminal law to deal with, with the organized crime groups that will be doing that. Anyone who sells cannabis outside of that highly regulated system of, of distribution for a product of known potency, known purity, and known provenance, we know where, we'll know where it came from, anybody operating outside of those systems will still be committing a criminal offense. And I also believe that there should be a, another criminal offense, a more serious criminal offense, for those who would sell it to kids. And, and because we, we are very sincere, we need to do a better job protecting our kids. And it's not just having regulations and, and rules and punishments in place for the people that would sell it. We also need to provide our kids. Like I, I've worked with young people most but, of I mean, what, what age group are we talking well, about where it would be legal? Well, hang on a second. We need to provide our kids with, with better information, 
so that they, they clearly know the facts about the risks to their own health and their own outcomes. Yeah, but did you listen to your parents when they tell, told you about what was good for you and what was bad for you when you were growing up? Well, you know, I, I did listen to my parents. I've never used an illegal drug and, and, or, or, or any kind of a psychiatric dr drug, but I also listened to my peers and, and, and my teachers. And, and all of those influences are really important for a young person. I think it's really important that we make sure that parents, teachers, kids all have accurate inf evidence-based information on what the real risks of this drug are. And, and we know this drug can have a very negative effect on the developing adolescent brain. We know that, that the earlier they begin to use it, the more frequently they use it, and the higher potency of what they use, the greater the risk. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to start. We're almost out of time, but I do want to ask you, uh, so the bill should still be introduced, is it next month, well, sometime this spring? Well, a bill's going to come forward, and that's the beginning of an important process of developing with the provinces and with the municipalities a strict system of regulation and putting the infrastructure in place to make sure that it helps us achieve but what not. we're setting out to achieve. And so we're talking about a great deal of work, and that's one of the reasons I went out. So and it's not going to happen overnight? Well, of course not, and it shouldn't happen overnight. This, this is important, and it's important that we get it right, and we are absolutely committed to taking the time to do this right. Okay, Bill Blair, thanks for taking the time to join us. Of course. Stay with us. More to come on Durham now. Don't go away.